In our fourth tutorial, we configure an analysis to calculate setup times over a production shift and prepare the data for a report. We show how to identify relevant signals, calculate run times, and intelligently determine maximum values. We then create a dynamic table for the report and optimize the layout in the report designer to obtain a precise and well-structured PDF document. All data and information that should be displayed in the report must be made available via the report generator interface. To configure this interface, we open it using the appropriate icon in the toolbar. Let's start with the first tab, the report setup. We see an empty table with five rows in the bottom left-hand section. If you select any row, you will immediately see that the previously created trends correspond to these five rows. We assign a name for the trend we want to display and check the box for making it available in the report designer. As we do not want to display a second trend, we can now change the tab and open the info columns. We already know this kind of tab from the second tutorial, the database extraction. At the bottom left, we find all available info fields that can be processed as a data source. In our example, we need only the start and end time. By double-clicking on the two variables, we create two entries in the upper table. Both are automatically available in the report. The variable name is taken from the source signal but can also be edited. However, this is not necessary in our example. Let's take a closer look at the start time by selecting it. The yellow highlighted area shows which range of the original signal is used. With automatic transfer by double-clicking, it is always the entire range, in this case all 25 digits. As we do not want to display the milliseconds in the report, there are two options. You can either select the relevant range with the mouse and then apply it using the Apply button. The other option is to adjust it directly in the function. More info columns are not required in the report example, so we can switch to the next tab, the Computed Columns. Same with this kind of tab. We have also seen this in the second tutorial. All calculated individual values must be entered in this table. In our case, this would be the query period that we created last. We can find this value at the bottom of the signal tree, under the expressions. We can either add the value by double-clicking or by drag and drop. At this point, please always make sure that the variables are discrete individual values. If signal series are inserted here, the report generator cannot handle them and automatically calculates an average value from them. This could subsequently lead to misinterpretations. We then come to the last tab of the interface, the table data. All data that is to be displayed later in our dynamic table must be entered here. Why dynamic? We usually do not have the same number of setup times in the requested period. With many large orders, tools rarely need to be changed, but with many small orders, they need to be changed more often. The table must therefore be dynamic and contain more or fewer lines. The information about the required number of lines is contained in our signal, more precisely in the number of measuring points, i.e., the X values. In order to have the number available in the report, we enter our signal in the corresponding table above. Which other values should be displayed in the table? In our case, the corresponding setup times and timestamps are sufficient. We need the Y values of these signals, which is why the signals are entered in the lower table. We have now entered all the information we need in the report. We can now leave EBA Analyzer and dive into the Report Designer interface. To do this, we switch back to the Report Setup tab and press the Edit Report Layout button. Welcome to the Report Designer. As we are starting with an empty report, we can use the Project Wizard. This wizard is especially helpful in connection with dynamic tables. We can skip the initial settings. When selecting the printer, we choose a suitable PDF creator. The next point is interesting as well. Here you can directly set whether document titles and page numbers should be created. The next page considers a few options for our dynamic table. Here we only select the summary on the last page. Now we are asked to define the content of the table. In our example, the record number is sufficient for the sequential numbering of the entries, as well as the calculated variables runtime and timestamp. We can also derive the column names directly from the variable names. The wizard can now be closed via Done. We note that the wizard has already done a lot of the work, which could of course also be done manually step by step. Most of the objects required in our report have already been created and only need to be edited. Let's start with the title. Double-click on the text element opens the paragraph properties. Here we find the prepared title, which can be edited by double-clicking on it. Please note that text content must be placed in quotation marks in the report generator, otherwise it cannot be interpreted. 
For the title we have just edited, we can find the corresponding properties on the right-hand side, such as font type, size, and color. If necessary, these can be adjusted at any time. In the next step, we expand the title by a further paragraph by double-clicking on the three dots. This subtitle is also directly assigned the font size 12, which is sufficient in our case. What is still missing in the title is the start and stop time. So let's add another paragraph. In this case, the pure text element is not sufficient, as the start time information has been transferred in a variable. However, it is very easy to link the text to the variable content. The variable can be found at the top right of EBA Analyzer folder. Let's repeat the procedure for the stop time, then the paragraph properties can be closed. If you want to separate the headline from the start and stop time for visual reasons, you can also define a paragraph. You can enter a paragraph spacing value of 10 points for the subtitle. What is still missing is the appropriate company logo in the report. To do this, we simply reduce the text field and switch to the Insert tab, select the image, and use the mouse to open a suitable window in which the image is to be displayed. Pay attention to one important point with images. Added images should always be included in the report project to ensure that the image is always available. Now let's take care of the rest of the content. The trend should be shown as an overview. To do this, we first need some space, so let's reduce the size of the table. If we have enough space, we can pull the trend in. We can find this in the variable list under the assigned variable name. We can set the scaling or adjust it by dragging the scaling points. The report is almost finished. Before we check how the report looks as a PDF, we need to make one more adjustment. All manually added objects are first added to the base layer in the report designer. This means that they are printed on every page of the report. In our case, this applies to both the logo and the trend. As we only want to display both on the first page, we still need to change this. To do this, we select both objects and assign them to the page one layer by right-clicking. The result can now be checked. The designer view is not made for showing how the result will look exactly. To access the preview, let's save the report layout for now and leave the designer. The preview can now be used in EBA Analyzer. The result already looks good, but a couple of things should still be changed. All points concern the table. First, the sequence number in column 1 of the dynamic table needs no decimal places, and the column titles are too long. Furthermore, the timestamp does not match. This is because the return timestamp is always relative, i.e., in seconds, starting with zero. To get the real timestamp displayed in the table, we have to adapt the function again. And finally, a small flaw. The dynamic table could start further up on the second page. Finally, from the second page onwards, no title and no trend are displayed, so there would be more space available for the table. Therefore, the position of the table could also be dynamic, depending on the page. So let's open the report designer again and change these points. Let's start with the format of the record number. We select it and change the format in the object properties. If the number format is selected here, the number of decimal places can be set to zero. The column name can also be adjusted in the header line of the table. As we are already in the table configuration, we can now correct the timestamp. As this is relative and is displayed in seconds, the start time helps us further because it contains the date and time. If we add the seconds to this variable, we get the corrected timestamp. To do this, we can use the add seconds function. What is still missing is the position and size of the table. I mentioned at the beginning that there are corresponding object properties for each object. This also includes size and position. Size and position must be considered individually because if the table starts further up, it can also be larger. A formula can also be entered in the correct place instead of the fixed value. A normal if condition helps here. After saving again, the result can be checked again using the preview function. All issues have been resolved and the report looks perfect. A further note on reporting. We have seen that the report always consists of three components, a suitable data set, an analysis rule, and a report rule. 
Only with the right components can the report be generated reliably and, of course, automatically. Thank you for your interest. See you next time.